Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be talking all about the Magic Motorsports lineup. So obviously, we've done B Flash, so now it's time to look at the Flex stuff and what this could do for you as a business. So this is the Flex box. It's the Pro box, and inside we have all this Magic stuff. So this is the Magic Motorsports Flex tool. It's, I would say, it's more based on a kind of like a garage or anything else like that. It could be your main tool because the, the protocol list is pretty good. So when you get this box, this is the Pro Box. So obviously it's a, the top of the line, the, the highest one they do. And this is the hardware kit that you get. So all these like pins and all this kind of stuff you get when you buy the box. Uh, this is the main unit. So this is the bit that does all the work, all the magic. This is the, the actual flex box, so it's got the OBD and all that kind of stuff. You get all these different pins, which go onto the edge of the ECU. So obviously you get pin outs and things like that. I don't know if you can see that, so you can pick which ones you pretty much want. You get a bunch of wires, which go which plug into this. This is the flex box. So this is basically your bench stroke boot, throw, whatever, wh whichever one you buy. If you get OBD and bench, you get all of this. This is the hardware kit, and you'll be using this when you're doing bench work and things like that. So in the instruction manuals I'll show you on the software, you'll see all the, the pinouts which relate to that box, which plugs into that box. Then you get other bits, like this is the adapter for the E, so that sits on top of there if you need that. You've got the power adapter, which obviously plugs into the wall with a, a assortment of plugs, adapters to plug into the wall. You get two OBD wires. One is OBD CAN and one is OBD ENET. Again, the software tells you which one to use. So that is that is pretty much the box and everything you get. Like you, you get all these adapters and things like that and you get this shiny little box. Now what Magic also does, which some don't, some do, is they also supply the hardware. So we've got things like this, which is the Magic Motorsport bench probe setup. So you get these these nice probes which fit nice in there to be able to pin out onto the ECUs without soldering and things like that. I love this. I love this. I use it for every tool that I have. So it's 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 pretty much universal. Just as the case of putting wires in and things like that. You can use it for say B flash, CAS. Uh, CMD, pretty much any of them that, that are, where you're going to have boot and pin out onto ECUs, you can have one of these. Th these are f I would recommend one of these to anybody. They also do this, which is great for the mobile guys, I'd say. I've used it a few times out, out in the field as such, and it comes super handy. So this is like the bench mini. So this just literally bolts onto the side of a table. You've got the pins and all sorts, so you can plug these into there and plug the other wires into there and such and put that onto an ECU but it's a lot less bulky than carrying that around it just comes in like a little bag and away you go you also get this here which fits these these are you don't really see them that often anymore because a lot of ECUs are ben uh, bench so you don't have to need them but these are this one's for Delphi probes which you can go onto there for BDM JTAG things like that so again this is another another like add on, like if you haven't got boot bench and look, if you haven't got boot and JTAG and all that, then you don't need those. If you have, then you need those, and they plug into flex and they plug into obviously onto the board. I have got an arm as well for this. This comes with an arm to be able to do the same thing as that. But I God knows where that's gone. I'll find it. In fact, I've just found it. Here it is, <coughs> and it's got the probe on this end. So this basically bolts onto the side of there, and you can use that. This is pretty cool in the fact that you pull that out, push it in, and that will come up to give you a bit more space. Or if you want to use the BDM probe on there, then you can. So that's pretty much the hardware covered. I think it's really just over to the software. Obviously, Magic, I've also started doing their own dyno, which is pretty cool. I've not used one yet, but it'll be good to see, and they did the Dino Road, which a lot of people have. I've had this since I bought Flex about four or five years ago. I've not used it yet because I have a Dino, but it would be, it does interest me. It's something I want to use. I just never remember when it comes to it. 
So it might be another video in future, see if I can put that against the Maha and see what it can do. So next, we'll go over the software. I think that's pretty much the hardware covered. It's pretty basic stuff. And then I'll show you what the software looks like and the advantages and disadvantages of having a Flex. So over to the Flex software. So the Flex software is all online based. So you get a browser, you get all the kind of things that go with a browser. So if you've got like dodgy internet, whatever else, you might struggle a little bit. But this is basically the V1 area. So we've got obviously status as Flex connected. Yes, internet, yes. I was on V2 until today where when Flex seemed to have had a bit of a problem with their server system. So I'm having to switch to V1 for the, for the video and then we'll see how, how they get on with that and switch back over. But a lot of people do say that V1 is a little bit more um, reliable at the minute, but I do prefer the V2 software. And obviously on the V2 software, we've got the logger and things like that. I'm not sure if we've got the V1, but we'll have a look. So, you met with this screen, which is pretty simple. Like, there's, there's, you know, you've got last used, you've got favorites, you've got show all. Obviously, I'm not going to have any last used on here because I don't normally use this software, but it's pretty simple. So, if I go for like BMW uh, M2, you can and then it's going to give you all the options for that. <coughs> so, I've got an F87 M2C, so I'm going to go for this one here. So obviously you've got the BMW M2 series, so you've got the name, you've got the engine, you've got the HP, you've got the year, and then here it tells you that it's got the ECU and it's got the gearbox. So if we just click on that, and then you met with this page here. So this page is pretty much the protocol page. It tells you all about the page, so obviously what car you've got, the name of the protocols, which I'm obviously clicked on the gearbox at the moment, and then you've got the ECU. So if you go for the OBD unlock, you can connect to the OBD and open it up. So attention suspension recovery protocol is on all new cars. So you, even like the cars that are locked, you can unlock them. So you've got the unlock, then you've got other. Not sure what other is. So bench is probably the easiest one to show you. We're just going here. <coughs> it's going to check your license before you sign on. And then you're going to get your connect to manual. So you can zoom in, zoom out, and do what you like. Now, uh, let me just get <coughs> the box out to make things a bit easier. So, with your when you're benching stuff, you're obviously going to be using your flex box. So what happens is. If you hover over it, you've got device flex 1.9 and you've got port A, port number one. So on here, you would have port A, number one. So you'd put a, uh, well, it doesn't have to be a red, it can be any color wire, but to keep it easy for yourself, I, I tend to use the color wires. So you'd find the, uh, the, obviously get a wire out, find the pin that kind of suits that pin, put the pin on it and then put the pin to A1 on here. And obviously you've got B, which is these ones here, and then the rest of them should be pretty much A and B. So you've got A, A. So this is pretty much Earth and positive, and these are all your connection probes. But always be mindful, the only thing that catches me out is like this one here. It's obviously white like the rest of them. It's got a black ring around it, so you kind of like, if you get used to spotting them, you spot it. But I have missed it a few times in the past. But they you always make sure that the white one you can find, and uh, again, B8 is going to be on here. And the brown. <coughs> You've also got them listed on the side here. So that pretty much tells you how to connect it for a bench. So obviously, it's pro they're quite good pictures, they're clear pictures. That's what the ECU will look like. So obviously, go by the pins, go by the plugs, so you know what kind of way you are. These ones aren't so bad because you, you can just take the internet manifold off, look down, not the internet manifold, you can take the charge cooler off. Look down and you can see the ECU, and these plugs are covered, if I remember rightly. These ones you can see, so it's a bit fiddly, but you can get in. And then go to next, and then on here you would connect to the ECU. So this little box here is like your status window, so it'll tell you what's going on. So if you're going to get an idea or anything else, it's going to flag up in here. Here is going to be your if it connects or not, and how long is left. 
and such and such like <coughs> it's pretty it's pretty simple to look at it's pretty simple to see you can split that off and have that off as a second window it's it's quite you know when it comes to this ECU reading writing stuff as long as you follow instructions and things like that then you're pretty much good to go let me if I go back and show you in the car so if I go back to vehicles and we go to one that is open so like this one here so this one's OBD what you've got to be mindful of is some of these cars are going to use a different lead than they tell you on here so remember when I showed you the red and the green lead in the box that's the green lead. So the green lead's ENET. So any ENET car, so a lot of the BMWs would need that plug. Now on V2 software, you also get to see that uh, how many people what use what protocol. So it'll say like like eighty percent of people use the OBD protocol. So you kind of know that it's you know quite safe. And then ten percent might use the what's it boot, and some might use the bench. That'd be for other jobs, cloning things like that. So, in the middle, we've obviously got also got little things to do, what not to do. So, charger on, put the key in compartment, blinkers must be on, fasten drive seat, all that kind of stuff. I don't want to put a screwdriver in your lock. I don't know what that is, but leave your, leave your seat belt in. <coughs> Set gear shift to P mode, to so on dashboard. I just normally plug, plug, plug the passenger seat into the driver's plug. And just that's pretty much enough for me. I've never had one fail, so. They're not as bad as they used to be. I think it's kind of calmed down a little bit now. But flex pretty much, again, you're going to get met with the same page. Connect, it'll connect to the car. It's like doing an ID, do the virtual read, write. You can, you can save the CAF D, which is quite handy on flex, and just write the CAF D as well. So that's quite good. So when you do a, when you do a read, it'll ask you if you want to save the CAF D. So yes, and obviously write the CAF D. I mean, I might plug into my car and just show you that, but. I don't think I really need to, so it doesn't really have to be that simple. Like you, I think you guys should pretty much know what you're kind of doing. Obviously, I've got them all, so boot's going to be split in the ECU, so you're going to get two manuals. So you've got your PCB manual. Now, how this works is obviously it's telling you where that is and where that is, so that's upside down. So B9 is you basically put a pin on B9 and then you put that into B9 on here. So it's kind of like that's your reference for your pin on your box. And then you've got your connector manual again, so it's going to tell you where to put those pins. It's flipped round, but I don't know why they didn't use the same picture, but they haven't, and that's what it looks like. Again, watch out for the whites. Next. <coughs> again, same again. Like you've got your voltage here, 3.45 volts is obviously because I'm only running on the USB at the minute. I'm not running on the power supply. Use the flex power supply that they give you. Try not to mix and max power supplies. I've been quite from that before. Some power supplies that allow above 12 volt, and then I've seen magic ones just flip around to about like 14 volt, 12 volt, and things like that. It must be based on the protocol. So obviously bear that in mind. Use this or try and use the stuff that comes with you know with the box. So <coughs> that is pretty much all I can show you software based, just based on the flex software itself. Now, the way magic work is they you run off your own account. I think I've got my account open. I have. So you basically run, you have, when you sign up for Magic Motorsport, you get a, you have to sign up for an account, and that account becomes a, the account where you buy everything. Do your subs, you do everything all through the account. So if you, if they do services on here as well. So you've got DPF, EGR, DPF, IMO, Hot Start. So this is why I say that Flex is more for your garage type place. So if you're all right running like a lot of ECUs and you're doing things like that, you do cloning, you're doing DPF, EGR, you're doing all that kind of stuff. Flex do, or Magic Motorsport, shall I say, do a lot of services for you. Obviously, if you've got a file supply, you're not going to need a lot of them, but some of them, your, your file supply them might not be able to do, say like IMO off or things like that. So it's always handy to have like other options. And there's, there's, there's lots of options on here. So extract IMO data for the TCU, IMO data service for the SIMOS 10, there's all sorts of stuff, like the, the clone bag PCR 2.1, auto clone services. I think that's mainly like med 17, med things like that. <coughs> So there's quite a lot of stuff going on. You know, they do quite a lot of things. And you've got online support, so you've got online chat, which, like I said earlier, try and keep that to simple questions like, uh, like I can't get my account, 
flex isn't working and they'll be able to help really quick if you've got anything sales that you want to speak to that's where you go for that if you want anything a bit more in depth say if you have a problem with ecu then i probably wouldn't use the chat service i would use the uh why did they put that now they can do a ticket where did they put that oh there you go tickets mm -hmm. so you create a new ticket if it's something a bit more complex so if, if you've got something that's like uh, stuck on an ECU, you haven't got a pin out, or an ECU's failed on you, or something like that, I'll probably try and stick to the, the tickets because it's a bit more in depth and you're gonna get better answers and they can ask for a lot of stuff and you put you talk to like a different set of people. So it's always good to use that if you've got problems with there. Obviously, Magic also do stage X, which is another level. So Magic kind of cover quite a few different levels. So not only do they offer you the the hardware to be able to read and write to the ECUs. They offer the hardware for you to be able to pin out and connect, like I showed you the, the, the Bench Connect and the, the, the Mac Mini and things like that. They also offer a software where you can make your own tunes, do your own book codes, do DPF EGRs, things like that. And that's StageX. So if I just log into my StageX account, I'll show you that. <coughs> So this is stage X. I'll just show you an overview. I actually do have a course for this. So if you want to look a bit more in depth, then I'll probably go on there. But Flex are pretty much covered A to Z. Like they offer you the tool to be able to read and write to the ECUs. They offer you the tool to be able to work with the ECUs. So if you're a character doing cloning and things like that, then you're going to want one of those. They also offer the login software. It's kind of built into their Flex tool, but you have to have all the protocols for that. So if you're on a slave, you need to be a slave full. If you're a master, you need to be master full. And then you've also got the, the, the power to be able to edit your tunes as well. So this is the stage X system, which is by Magic Motorsport. It's a, it's a, a plus, like you, you have to kind of subscribe to it, you pay a monthly fee. But if within the software, you've got options to for deactivations and things like that. Obviously you've got to purchase these. I get them half price because I've had the, the license quite a while. You also get <coughs> DTC codes, which is quite useful. So you can just go on here, type in your code, and you can take the codes out. Obviously, don't be taking codes out, things like crank sensors and things like that. Be sensible with your tuning. You've also got map packs. So if you want to tune the car or learn how to tune the car, let me just show you that, put me over there. So if you want to tune the car, you've got options to get into that and to change stuff. It's all laid out for you. This is just a and of you. So with Magic, you've kind of got a lot of different options. Like There's a lot to do. Like, I've had my Flex for probably about four years now. I think about the same length of time as I've had B-Flash. Now, I use B-Flash for development. I use Flex for garage work. So if there's anything like quick flashing or I'm doing cloning or it's, it's really powerful for the gearboxes, for like Mercedes and things like that, I use it for that. I use it for quite a lot of stuff, like, and they offer the full service, so you can just be with Magic and use everything. So you can have the software to edit, you can have the login software, the ECU read and write software, and all the hardware that you need to go with it. So they're good guys to, to like look at and get on. If you are looking for a flex, I hope this has helped, like the, the whole Magic system. And please like and subscribe. It's been a bit slow on the old subscribes, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. What I'm probably going to do is I've got more cars to do, so I'm going to pick up the tool and I'll probably use it in one of my next videos just so you can see it working, how it all works and things like that. This is kind of like a video just to show you the hardware. So that is pretty much that. So pros and cons about having Flex. I'd say the, the pros are you get pretty good support. Um... The protocol list on Flex is really strong. Like they, they cover a lot of things, even some oddball stuff that you might come across, like the Odenzo and things like that, which other tools are bench. This will do OBD. They're quite quick on the protocols, so obviously when they're releasing stuff, they, you get quite a lot of protocols for your subscription. The subscription, my master works out to about 740 quid for the year, and obviously that is full. I've got full OBD boot bench. Uh, BBM and all that other stuff. So the, the subs aren't too expensive either. They're, they're not kind of like in the middle. They're a lot cheaper than some, but a little bit more expensive than others. 
but for what you get, it's well worth it, I'd say. Uh, it's strong at doing what it does. Uh, I've, I've only ever, I think I've only ever had one ECU go down on me, and they were <coughs> quite quick to help me fix it. So apart from that, yeah, it's pretty good. So positives, quick, good, quite stable, and pretty decent return on the money because of the protocols covered. Downsize, downsize is probably, uh, well, obviously I can't get on the V2 software today, so I've had to switch to V2, V1 just for this video because for some reason their servers have gone down. But apart from that, it, it, you know, it's been it's been pretty reliable for me. So, yeah, it's a tool that that if you've got a garage, if you do quite a lot of uh, tuning, so say like a lot of cars come through, you get like a wide range of cars. It's a strong tool for that, I'd say. It's not really a much of a I wouldn't really call it a development tool compared to all the tools like the the last video I did. But you know, it's good at what it does. And it also has extra bits, like you can turn the flex box into a kind of OBD reader. So they've got a wire that you can buy where you put the wire in and you can boot up the ECU on bench and be able to get on with Autel and things like that to get codes and stuff off it, which I find quite useful. So if someone's dropped you an ECU off and they forgot what codes are on it, you can open the ECU and get the codes off. So things like that, you know, it all helps us. So they're quite on it. They're uh, very... A uh, very up-to-date kind of company, Magicar, and they're, they're well on it, and they're really excited about stuff, and they bring out all the, the best hardware as well. So, yeah, I mean, I would buy one. If you do want to buy one, they're available in our shop and also on the chip tuning shop and things like that. We support Aftab quite a lot because he's a, he's a decent guy and he sends things out really fast. So, <coughs> that's it really, guys. <laughs> so, I think <coughs> I'll cover... Probably two more tools which I use on a day-to-day -day basis. One of the main ones I don't really use, but I could also cover that as well. So the next video is probably going to be more about car related because I want to do a bit more with the cars. And I'll probably try and use Flex if I can, just to show you the, if, if I can get on V2, it will be really good because I can kind of finish that off. So apart from that, thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next videos. Peace out.